Hi, and welcome to the Revelation 666 series of videos. This one is titled, Behold the Man. And that phrase occurs in a significant um, verse of the Bible. That would be John chapter 19, verse 5. We will be using the King James Pure Bible Search software. Download it for free, purebiblesearch.com. We'll also be using the web version of the King James Pure Bible Search software. First, I need to make mention of two important numbers. The number 74, which is the value of the name Jesus using a simple English ordinal gematria. And the number 47, which is the value of the word beast. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom, that him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. Remember the value of the name Jesus, 74? Well, the number 666 is a multiple of the number 74. It is 74 times 9. 74 being a special uh, instance of 37, 37 doubled, and 666 is 37 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. And notice we are in the 18th verse of Revelation 13, 18. Again, 6 plus 6 plus 6. Now our goal is to understand the man to identify the man and the connection of the man to the beast. Let's go to John chapter 19 verse 5. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. Real quick some uh, word and verse counts. The word forth occurs 888 times in the King James Bible. The word Thorns occurs in 47 verses of the King James Bible. And the word purple and robe combined occur 74 times. 888, um, I believe that's 74 times 12, but it is a multiple of 74. The value of the name Jesus, simple English gematria. Now the phrase, behold the man, occurs exactly six times in the King James Bible. This is the sixth and final occurrence of the phrase. The first occurrence is in Genesis 3.22. We'll go to Genesis in future videos and we'll examine that verse. But understand the phrase occurs exactly six times. In the King James Bible, the name Jesus, all letters capitalized, occurs exactly six times. Three of the occurrences are when he is named. The other three occurrences are on the title that was placed upon the cross. Let's look at some properties of the number six. First, it is a perfect number. There aren't very many perfect numbers. It is the only single digit perfect number. There is only one two digit perfect number. We'll examine that number, talk about it. And there is only one three digit perfect number. And here shortly, I'll explain what a perfect number is. Notice that the number six is triangular. In fact, it is double, double triangular because it is the third triangular number and the number three is also triangular. Think of the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And the number 666 is triangular. It is the 36th triangular number and it is also double triangular because the number 36 is the eighth triangular number. And when we think of the number six is often called the number of man. And that is true because man was created on the sixth day. But the number six is a number for the creation, the creation of the world, the six days of creation. God's perfect creation, his work, was six days, and he rested on the seventh. Now let's go see why the number seven is perfect as well. Here's a sequence of numbers. This sequence called the centered hexagonal number sequence is governed by a formula and that formula is based on the number six. You can see each one increases by six. So we start with one plus six and it's plus 12 then plus 18 and so on and so forth. And the number seven is its first non-trivial number in the sequence, one being the trivial case. But notice how we have six plus a one. The six days of creation plus the one day of rest, the one the one set apart uh, apart from the rest. You might be familiar with this uh, seven 
in packaging um, a can of Vienna sausages, for example. But even more importantly, this number sequence is used in electrical conductors, in transmission lines, wires, cables. So you'll find that the wires will contain various strands, and the strands will be um, either a single wire, or seven strands, 19, 37, 61, and so forth, um, depending on the size of the conductor. And through these transmission lines, all the power and energy that we use um, are transferred through these conductors. And the word energy equals 74 using ordinal English gematria. That's the value of the name Jesus. And the word power equals 77. That is the value of the word Christ. Okay, let's move on. Let's look at the second perfect number. That is the number 28. And the, the Revelation 666 series video um, titled Count the Number of the Beast, I pointed out that the word lamb has a value of 28. Well, the word man also has a value of 28. 28 being a perfect number, and it's also a triangular number. In fact, every even perfect number is a triangular number. And I factored 28 out as 4 times 7 for a reason, to emphasize this 4-7 pattern that exists. And, of course, beast has a value of 47. So the basic definition of a perfect number is a, no a number whose the sum of its divisors equal the number itself. And, and not counting the number itself as one of the divisors. So, for example, the number 6 is divisible by 1, 2, and 3, and the sum of 1, 2, and 3 is 6. And 28 divisible by 1, 2, 4, 7, and 14, and the sum of those numbers is 28. Let's go to a place in the Bible where the word perfect occurs. Psalm 37, 37. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. The word mark occurs 37 times in the King James Bible. The word perfect occurs in 94 verses of the King James Bible, a multiple of 47. And the word man, case sensitive as found in this psalm, in the Old Testament occurs 1,739 times. That does include the superscriptions in the psalms. And let's uh, think about this. The, there was only one perfect man who ever walked this earth, and that was Jesus Christ. He was without blemish. This is also important. Was Jesus Christ marked? He was marked in his hands. Jesus was marked in his feet. He was marked on his head with the crown of thorns. And if you look at the standard uh, English cipher, if you combine the word mark and the name Jesus, it has a value of 666. And notice Jesus, like I mentioned earlier, has a value of 515. Psalm 37 is the 515th chapter of the Bible. This is not a coincidence. I will present the evidence for that in the remainder of this video. The phrase, perfect man, has a value of 470, using the same uh, English standard cipher. Back to Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. I am saying that that man is Jesus Christ. I know it's controversial. And we'll see the connection with 666 in detail as we proceed. So we're going to go to the Greek text, and then we'll go to the 666th verse of the New Testament. And we'll see what man we find there. Here's Revelation 13, 18 in the Greek. And if you look at the last word, it has a value of 666. At times it can be frustrating talking to King James only conservative Christians if you speak of Gematria because they believe it's numerology and it's witchcraft. But guess what? If you were to be translating this and you got to this last word, you would not be able to translate it without Gematria. That is how we get 666. So the procedure is set forth as an example for us in the Word of God, in the Greek text. There's no denying that. And if you look at the value of the entire verse, 
in the Greek text, 14,241. That is a multiple of 47, 47 being the number of the beast. And when I say Greek text, I am referring to the family of Textus Receptus, Beza, Stephanus, Scrivener, not the Nesselond. In the Nesselond, they spell out 666 in the Greek. It's, it's not three letters like you find in the Textus Receptus, uh, therefore destroying um, this pattern. Also, if you have an issue of copying and pasting the Greek text into, let's say, a, a site like the Matronator, which I'm using, and you get the wrong value, is because the, the, the last letter in 666, the stigma, will not um, copy properly. I don't know what the problem is. I made a short video on that. It's a few minutes long. If you run into that or you want to replicate this, um, watch that video. Now, Revelation 13, 18, the first three words roughly translated hear wisdom or wisdom here has a value of 1,598, a multiple of 47. Speaking of 1,598, one of the Greek Texas Receptus, the 1598 Beza. But the uh, significant thing is here we see a multiple of 47. So the, remain, the remainder of the verse is also a multiple of 47. But let's look at the last, what is it, five words of Revelation 13, 18 in the Greek, which translate, and his number is 603 score and 6. That has a value of 2,368. Not only is this number a multiple of 74, this number is found in the genetic code of every living thing, according to a peer-reviewed scientific paper. Uh, go to the website whatabeginning.com to find that. Vernon Jenkins. But more importantly, the number 2,368 is the value of the name Jesus Christ, as found in Revelation 1.1. In fact, it's found in Matthew 1.1. Um, I think almost the majority of combination of Jesus and Christ has this value, 2,368. How can this be a coincidence? Right there were 666's six, six, six in Revelation 13, 18, and his number is 603 score and 6. That clause has a value of 2,368, the exact value of the name Jesus Christ. I don't believe that's a coincidence at all. And that is not the only evidence we have in Revelation 13, 18, or from the Greek, that we are the man is Jesus. This is the word for man, as found in Revelation 13, 18. I believe it's pronounced anthropos. And it has a value of 1,510, or 151 times 10. Remember the word mark had a value of 151 earlier when we marked Jesus? Now watch. The phrase Jesus Christ, using ordinal English, has a value of 151. And 151 is the 36th prime number 666 is the 36th triangular number, of course 36 being the 8th triangular number, and 36 being 6 times 6. So we see this pattern of 6 uh, in this, uh, even in this prime. Back to Revelation 13, 18. The first word here occurs in exactly 151 verses of the King James Bible the value of the phrase Jesus Christ using ordinal English. Here in the Greek, um, as found in John 19, verse 5, the name Jesus has value 888. Remember um, the word forth in that same verse, where Pilate brings forth Jesus, has a value of 888. And if we go to the King James Bible, in the, in the New Testament, um, the word man, case sensitive, combined with the word number, which is not case sensitive at all, um, the total is 888. Again, the value of the name Jesus in the Greek, and also a multiple of 74, the value of the name Jesus in the simple English. Now let's go to the 666th verse of the New Testament. That would be Matthew chapter 20, verse 18. Um, verse 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, 
And the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. The word Jerusalem, all forms of the word Jerusalem occur 814 times in the Bible, a multiple of 74, and in 141 verses of the New Testament, a multiple of 47. And Son of Man, here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. I submit to you that that man is none other than Jesus Christ. The phrase Son of Man in this verse, as found in the Greek, uh, has a value of 2,960. That is 74 times 40. Back to Matthew uh, 20, verse 18. The phrase, the Son of, combined with the word man, uh, uh, the verse total, 2,368. The exact value of the name Jesus Christ in the Greek. The phrase, shall be, occurs in 666 chapters of the King James Bible. I'll show some screenshots to, to prove these and show these uh, patterns. Here you can see um, the phrase, the son of, case sensitive, and man, case sensitive. Uh, the verse total, 2,368. Again, uh, the value of the name Jesus Christ in the Greek, and the value of the, the phrase, and his number 603 score and 6 in the Greek as well. Here's shall be, you can see, 666 chapters of the King James Bible. Uh, let's go back to Matthew 20, verse 18. The phrase, they shall, <clears throat> in the New Testament, occurs 70, in 74 verses and 888 um, times in the Old Testament. Uh, case sensitive as found here. Uh, let's look at some other patterns, the word condemn and death combined, total 396, that is 66 times 6. The word shall in the phrase condemn him combined in the narratives, and the narratives being Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, the first five books of the New Testament, the analog to the first five books of the Old Testament, which is called the Law. But you can see, um, 666 verses in the narratives and here's a screenshot to to show that pattern there and let's look at the next verse uh, verse 19 and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him and the third day he shall rise again this is a very profound verse uh, in the Bible this is the first occurrence of any form of the word crucify in the Bible. Uh, the word uh, deliver occurs 296 times in the King James Bible, a multiple of 74. The phrase the third occurs in 148 verses of the Bible. Uh, again, another multiple of 74. The value of the name Jesus in simple ordinal English. Now, the phrase shall rise combined um, with the word again Case sensitive, 666 times in the King James Bible. Here's a screenshot to prove that pattern out. In fact, the phrase shall rise, which isn't case sensitive at all, but occurs 37 times. Again, case sensitive occurs 629 times. That's 37 times 17 for a total of 666. Let's look at several more uh, patterns. All forms of the name Jesus in the, the first five books of the New Testament occurs in 672 verses that is 666 plus 6 now remember Jesus all capitalized occurs exactly six times so the case sensitive pattern reduces down to 666 verses this also includes one mention of Joshua I believe it is in Acts uh, chapter 7 verse Five, the name Jesus is there, but it is actually referring to Joshua in the Old Testament. And if we look at the name Joshua in the Old Testament, it occurs 216 times. That is 6 times 6 times 6. Joshua contains 6 letters. Joshua is the 6th book of the Bible. 
and the English ordinal gematria of the name Joshua is equal to 74, just like Jesus. Let's continue. If you looked at the, if you watched the video, which not many people watched it, uh, what I what I call a Revelation six six six, the Book of the Lord. I showed a pattern where the phrase the Book of the Lord six 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 there, and six 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 um, in the Lamb's Book of Life. Here, um, look, look Matthew one one, the Book of the Generation of Jesus Christ, the Son of David, the Son of Abraham. Jesus, case sensitive, as found in Matthew one one, and the word book in the first five books of the New Testament, the narratives, in six hundred and sixty six verses. But let's make a connection between the man Jesus and the beast, which is the Lamb. John chapter 1 verse 29. This is the first occurrence of the word Lamb, case sensitive capitalized, as found here. And um, Lamb capitalized only occurs in the Gospel of John and the book of Revelation. That's That should be a clue there. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus and Lamb in the narratives. Uh, case sensitive. All forms of name Jesus combined with Lamb. 666 verses. The phrase, the next day John, combined with the word seeth, the name Jesus, and the word coming, occur 666 times in the Gospels. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The word behold, the phrase the Lamb, and the phrase of God, uh, combined in the Bible, occur in 666 chapters. The word behold, Lamb, and God, case sensitive, combined for a total of 4,700 in the King James Bible. Let's go to the book of Revelation and see a, a, a very interesting pattern. It might scare some people. Revelation 9, 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, Revelation 9, 4. 94. 94 is a multiple of 47. Seal of God. The word seal, case sensitive, as found in Revelation 9.4. The word of, case sensitive, as found in Revelation 9.4. And God combine for 666 in the book of Revelation. Now this King James Code, this pattern, you could just examine the book of Revelation. And there's patterns within that book. Or the book of Matthew. Or the book of Genesis. Or the Old Testament. The New Testament. Or the Bible as a whole. It's... It's, it's just a profound um, book. It, it's just, I, words can't describe. Anytime I'm studying this book, I am just in awe of God's handiwork. Now I want to introduce uh, the trigonal cipher. I haven't uh, talked about it much, but there are some profound um, things about this cipher. In fact, it uses the triangular numbers. Um, 666 is triangular. Uh, look at the number 3, the, the Godhead. Uh, the number 6, we've been talking about that. Uh, 66 books in the Bible, that's triangular. The 11th triangular number, the, the phrase Jesus Christ, 11 letters. 153, uh, John 21, 276, the 276 souls of the book of Acts. But anyways, there's an amazing 666 pattern uh, at the end of this video uh, connected with this cipher. Well, let's go to uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. And what's the point of this? Revelation 13, 18. A number connected with wisdom. This, this number isn't connected to some uh, uh, murdering Roman emperor in the first century, or some, uh, some unclean man that's going to show up in the 21st century to deceive people. No, this number is pointing uh, to the man, Jesus Christ. But let's look at the trigonal cipher. I am the Lord, 777. Uh, you know, all three-digit rep numbers are multiples of 37. Uh, 777 is 37 times 3 times 7. And 
in John 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 uh, the phrase the Father the phrase the Word and the phrase the Holy Ghost combine for 777 and if you want to know um, more about the the number seven patterns that are throughout the King James Bible uh, go to the YouTube channel Truth is Christ but uh, let's look at the ordinal English simple English and you know, the first verse in the Bible in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Now this is the reverse English where Z equals 1, A equals 26. Has a value of 777. John 1.1 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Using the same reverse uh, English. Has a value of 925. You should recognize that 925 because that is the value of Jesus Christ using the standard English. And uh, 925 plus 777 is 1,702. Of course, both those numbers are multiples of 37, so their sum will be a multiple of 37. But it's 37 times 46. Why is that important? Because these numbers are in our, gene, our genes. Uh, you have 46 chromosomes. Um, and in the mitochondrial DNA, you have the 37 genes that are passed from the mother. And remember, Jesus Christ is the seed of the promised seed. Now, if you take the number 777 plus 925 plus 666, you get the, value, the number 2,368, the exact value of Jesus Christ in the Greek. Here, let's look at uh, some more reverse English and his number is 603 score and 6 has a value of 611 multiple of 47 where does 611 occur? well Jesus case sensitive as found in the four gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, John occur 611 times in 592 verses 592 that is 74 times 8 now the 666 pattern the last 666 pattern Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, think about this. We've, we've read, let's say we've read the first 666 chapters of the Bible. Now we've come to the 667th. Let's pick it up. Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God. Okay. Well, well, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for the number of a man, that man being Jesus Christ. Here we talk about this. Who is the wise man? and A man's wisdom. Now, the, I've highlighted the phrase oath of God because using the tri trigonal uh, a cipher, oath of God has a value of 666. And it only occurs once in... Uh, the King James Bible, and that was in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. After we traveled 666 chapters, we arrived to that point. And Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of that oath. Let's go to Luke chapter 1 in the prophecy or song of Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, who said, Behold the Lamb of God. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to form the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham. And who was the mother of John the Baptist, the wife of Zacharias? Elizabeth. And the name Elizabeth means Oath of God. We are just beginning this study of uh, 666 in the Revelation 666 series. We're going to go to the book of Genesis, chapters 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, various uh, other places in the Old Testament and the New Testament as well. Uh, also, the number 666 explicitly occurs three times in the Old Testament. We'll examine all those. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
God bless, and bye for now.